craniopagus twins. Lori and Reba are connected just above the eye socket and facing opposite directions. Conjoined twins are connected in many different ways. For example, Ischiopagus twins are joined at the bottom of the torso and connected at the pelvis, liver, intestines, and reproductive systems. Cephalopagus twins have conjoined brains, necks, and chests, but with separate limbs. Another variety, Paropagus twins, are attached side by side at the torso and may sometimes share a trunk with two heads. Pygopagus twins connect at the pelvis, spine, and bowels. Much about the world of conjoined twins remains mysterious, starting with how they are created in the first place. During conception, an egg is fertilized by a sperm, and the new cell starts dividing to make a fetus. Sometimes the fertilized egg splits into two distinct individuals, creating identical twins. On very rare occasions, these twin embryos grow as one. Exactly what causes this phenomenon is not known. Uh, can you please introduce yourself? My name is Siraj Venkatankatank. Currently, um, I am single and I have two children. My wife left me when she found out that our twins that we had were conjoined. Um, they're actually conjoined at the head or, or, or cranial. Um, and from what the doctors have told me, this is probably the, the most rarest form of it. Uh, do you have a job? Um, currently, I'm unemployed because, you know, with the housing market, and that is where I work in the real estate. And so the fact that my wife left me, even, in, even though it's such a, been such a tough situation, I, I'm at a loss for words, you know, I, I just, I can't even do this, can you turn it off? Just. Hello, my name is Dr. Saibi. I'm a world-renowned expert on conjoined twins. Today, here at Johns Hopkins University Hospital, we will be performing a surgery on a cranial pagus conjoined twin. Hello, oh, today these are, we see these twins, Shiv and Sham. They are cranial pagus conjoined twins because they are connected at their heads because, and they share a brain and various major arteries and veins. Now we will start the actual operation and we'll begin by making small incisions along the places where it is connected. Now I will attempt to separate the twins. It's starting to bleed, so I have to call on Dr. Patel to reduce the bleeding. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. All right. Just gonna remove some of the blood. We have reached a stage now where we can begin to tease apart the twins. Oh no! This baby is, has severe trauma. Must, Dr. Patel, please come and stop the bleeding. We must stop the ble bleeding or it will die. Alright, so you've cut a major artery connecting the two brains. So I will attempt to stop the bleeding. One of these babies have been successfully separated. Oh my, oh my God, this baby has lost too much blood. We, this, we must have an emergency blood transfusion. This is going to be a very long procedure. It's 
operation has not been a success. The baby has lost way too much blood and as a result has died. Now that the surgery is over, uh, how do you feel about the results? Well, you know, the, the feelings I have are honestly mixed. While I guess you could say, well, the thing is, originally before the surgery, I had two children. They may have been conjoined at the head, but there still were two. Now, after the surgery, knowing that one couldn't make it and the other one did, I mean, I, I'm obviously happy one did, but the fact is, I still lost one of them. One of like, the kids that I had, you know, been part of giving life to. I, I'm incredibly sad about that. I'm, I'm not sure how long it'll take me to heal from that, but it's something that I guess I'll have to do. And as for the one that's living, that's a blessing, you know. I'm very, I'm very, very happy about that. Now, after the surgery, they'll be able to live a normal life. 